Before we start uh, this exposition this morning, I'd like to pray for us, and then we'll dive in. Let's pray. No fear of death. No power of hell can rob us these truths that we have been hearing throughout this week. Therefore, Lord, we commit ourselves to you this morning, even as we come to the last few verses of this chapter. We pray that you'd speak to us, you'd speak to our hearts. We pray especially that the Holy Spirit of God would continue working in our hearts, that we would hear from you. Please, Lord, would you encourage the faint-hearted in this room? We pray that you'd encourage those who really need to hear from you, to hear from your word. Lord, would you feed us from your word this morning? We pray that you'd encourage our hearts, that you'd help us to long and to look forward to heaven, to that time when we'll be given new bodies that don't get sick, that don't get tired. Please, Lord, even as we come to this passage, you pray that you'd speak to us, you'd speak to each one of us. For these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you have been laughed at and mocked so hard by your friends. I mean, your friends literally ganging up against you to literally mock you because of your faith. Because of something that you believe, they think it's ridiculously silly or foolish. I don't know if you have been laughed at. You see, most of us here, I bet, have experienced this. I'm sure many of us in this room this morning have been asked to explain certain things the Bible says. And then our friends think these are so hard things to believe in. And they tell us, to explain. They tell us to tell them what these things mean. Many of our friends and even some of our neighbors where we come from, they tell us, okay, you believe that? Do you really believe that? Then tell me, how will that happen? So you say you believe that, do you? Then explain to me, how will that happen? How will that look like? You can't be serious that you believe in the resurrection of the dead. Yes, you can't be serious that you believe that when we die, we'll rise again and we'll be given new bodies. How? You can't be serious. Some of our friends would ask us that. You see, yesterday and the day before yesterday, we have been looking at this chapter First uh, Corinthians chapter 15. And one of the things that Paul continues to say again and again and again is that the dead will resurrect. That is, those who die in Christ will be raised again. But some people will be wondering, and I even saw a question from uh, some of us yesterday, if we will be raised, how will we be raised? What kind of a body will we be given? Will we be raised as spiritual bodies, or will we have physical bodies like the ones we have here? Will we be raised younger as little babies come and are being born? Or will we be raised old bodies like our parents? Or are we, will we be raised in the bodies that we have right now, young bodies and youthful bodies? How will the dead be raised and with what kind of body? Now, this question of resurrection and the kind of body that will be raised with is the question that many ask during Paul's time. After Paul has said that the dead will be raised, some people would come back to him and ask him, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? And here is a question that many might ask. After that, uh, someone we had yesterday on the resurrection how will be the dead raised? How will I be raised? With what kind of body will I be raised with? Will we be raised exactly with this body? Or will it be different? 
how will the new body look like? And how can we even be sure of this? Paul in this passage that is before us, that have just been read to us so clearly, goes ahead to give us a clear explanation of what will happen. In fact, what he does in this passage, he tells his hearers to look at two or to consider two things. First, he tells us to look at creation. And by looking at creation, we will not doubt the fact that God can raise the dead. Just look around, look at creation, look at things that are familiar to you, and you will not doubt it that God can raise the dead. And then the second thing that Paul tells his hearers and us here this morning is look at Christ. Look at Christ. And you will not doubt at all that God can raise the dead. But in fact, what will happen is you will be encouraged that you will be like him with bodies transformed by him. So two things. Look at creation and look at Christ. So first, let's look at these two things one by one. The first thing that Paul says here is, look at creation, don't doubt that God can raise the dead. Look at creation and don't doubt that God can raise the dead. Verses 35 all the way to verses 41. Paul here starts by asking a question or asking us to be able to look at creation. And by doing this, he says, there is something that you're going to learn from looking at creation. Look with me what he says there from verses 35. Please look down with me even as I read them. Verse 35 to 38, he says, But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? And then verse 36, he says, you foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. Verse 37, and what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel perhaps of wheat or of some other grain, but God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed, its own body. You see, dear ones, what Paul is saying here is, death is what comes before new life. Death is what comes before resurrection. And he illustrates this by using an example of a seed. What farmers plant they plant a seed, a seed that is dead, and then what God does to that seed, God gives it a new life. It might be a seed of a grain of wheat, or maize, or beans, you name it. The seeds, as the farmer plants them, they are dead. But what happens when they are in the soil? Look with me what Paul says there in verse 38. God gives them a new body, as he has chosen. You plant a, a grain of wheat, you put it on the, in, on, in the soil or a grain of maize, and then God gives it a new body. What do we see planting or coming up, up the soil? It's a new body, something that's totally different. For each kind of seed, God gives it its own body. In other words, what comes out is different for each thing, maize, its own body, wheat, its own body, beans, its own body. And then Paul says, look at creation. Look at what God is doing. And don't doubt that God can raise the dead. Now, this illustration that Paul uses here is very simple and yet very profound. You and I don't have to become farmers to understand what Paul is saying. We even don't have to be involved in farming to get what he's saying here in this passage. For we all know that that which is planted, God transforms it and he changes it and gives it a new body as he chooses to do. In fact, those seeds have to go through many deaths and then they go many resurrections. When you saw them in the ground, new life emerges. And Paul says, this is true for all Christians. It is true for all of us who will trust in Jesus and put our faith in him. After death, new life. After death, new life emerges on that resurrection day. 
And God will give us a new body that will never die again. So look at creation, Paul says, and don't doubt that God can raise the dead. And please note, Paul doesn't just stop with the illustration of famine. No, he goes on ahead to talk about the diversity of life in all of universe. Look with me what he says there in verse 39. Please look down with me. Verse 39, Paul says, All things made of fresh are not the same kinds of fresh. Humans have one kind of fresh. Animals have one kind of fresh. Birds have one kind of fresh. Fish has one kind of fresh. What he's saying is, we all don't look the same. Humans look one way. Birds look the other way. Fish look another way. You see, Paul is saying, by looking at creation all around you, you'll note the diversity of life in the world. Verse 40, he goes on to say, heavenly bodies are different, and earthly bodies are different. The beauty of heavenly body is one kind, but the beauty of the other body is of another kind. Very interesting that Paul notes here, being that Paul notes here. He says, by just looking around that creation, you realize if God can be able to create such wide and variety of bodies, will he not give us a new body? If other bodies differ with heavenly bodies, how can we not believe that God is going to give us a new body? What then this means is, if God has been able to do this and to clothe different things, the sun and the moon and the stars, name, you, name them, name them. If God has been able to do this, then what that means is, you should not doubt that he'll be able to give us a new body. Isn't it? Don't doubt that he will give us a new resurrected body. If he is able to create such a wide range and variety of stuff, then don't doubt it that he can raise the dead and give them a new body. Look around. Look around at creation. Look at the different things God has created. I don't know. Uh, I heard yesterday the, uh, the, the people who are doing the session on sexual purity kept mentioning Netflix. There is one doc documentary on Netflix I would want to recommend called Planet Earth. Some of you have watched it. There's this old man called David Attenborough. And what he does is he goes with his camera, big lenses, and then takes uh, different, uh, do, uh, he does different um, documentaries of creation. He will go under the sea, he will go into the forest, the rainforest, and then gives us just a spectacular view of what God has created. Different things, even things we don't know they exist. Paul does almost the same here. He says, look at creation. Look at the different things that God has created, both heavenly and earthly. Don't doubt that God can be able to give you a new body. If I've been able to create all those bodies, will he not be able to give us a new body? Paul says that. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it at all. The second thing that Paul says is there in verses 42 all the way to verse 49. He says, look at creation. Don't doubt that God can be able to raise the dead. But number two, look at Christ. We will be like him with bodies transformed by him. Look at Christ. We will be like him. We'll have bodies like his. We will be transformed by him. One thing that Paul notes in these verses is, is he, in these verses, verses 42 to 49, he compares two people. I think we mentioned briefly yesterday, these two people, who are they? First, Adam, the one we found in Genesis chapter 1, and then another new Adam who comes way later, who is better than first Adam, the second Adam, who is Jesus Christ himself. Paul compares these two people. First, he goes on to talk about what the body of first Adam, and all of us here, who are descendants of first Adam, this is how our body looks like. 
He says there from verse 43. Look down with me. Verse 43. Our bodies are perishable. Then the, he says our bodies are dishonorable. Then he says our bodies are weak. Then he says our body are natural. This is how he describes me and you. This is how he describes all of us in this room this morning. This is how our body looks like. Weak, dishonorable, natural, perishable. Our body decays. And we all can attest to this. We get tired. Just imagine just two days of camp and we are all almost getting very tired and exhausted. We get sick. All of us here at one point or the other have taken medicine or gone to hospital. We get tired. We feel weak. We get old. 30 years to come, all of you will start complaining of backaches. All of you, those smooth faces that you have in now will have wrinkles. <laughs> Believe it or not. I know most of us here don't like to think that one day you'll get old. Let me tell you a, a fact. Your grandmother or your grandfather was at one point your age. And one day you will be your grandmother or your grandfather's age. This is what it looks like to have a perishable body, one that gets old, one that's natural. Our bodies. Some of some of us, some of our body parts have started even failing, like my eyes. I need glasses to help my eyes to see. And so is many of us who have glasses here. Oh, they had some. <laughs> so believe it or not, natural body, the body that we share with first Adam, gets old. It's weak. It's perishable. Gets tired. We all have to keep taking medicine. Just imagine for us to function well. Some of us soon, those black hairs that you're having right now, We'd all be hoit. And you see, brothers and sisters, what this tells us is our bodies will not live forever. Soon we'll die, and soon we'll get back to dust where we came from. No wonder then Paul speaking to Christians here tells them, look at Christ. And by doing so, you will see what will happen to your body when you die. And dying we will. In fact, from verse 47, Paul puts Adam, the first Adam, and Christ, the second Adam, side by side. He compares them by using the word, just as, so also. Let's read this together. Verse 47, look down with me. Verse 47, I'm going to read 47, 48, and 49. And note how he puts them together. Just as, so also. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man, Jesus, is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of dust. And is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of Jesus, the man of heaven. Verse 49, a very good verse there. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. All of us here bear the, the, the marks of first Adam. I've just described that. In that we get tired, we'll get old, we'll die one day, just as Adam died. But Paul says here, if you have believed in Jesus, if you have believed in the second Adam, who is Jesus, you will also bear the marks of the second Adam. What does that mean? What we looked at today in the Bible study, what, did, what happened to Jesus? He resurrected. What that means is, so shall we. If you believe in Jesus in this room, as we said yesterday, death is not the end. Look at Christ. We will be like him one day with bodies transformed by him. If you believe in Jesus, the Bible tells us that one time you'll be transformed and you'll have a body. 
that is my case. And then at that time, what will happen is what Paul was describing from verse 32. He says, what is sown in, is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. So it's from perishable to imperishable. What he says is, what is sown dishonorable will be changed and transformed to be glorious. What is weak will be raised in power. And what is natural will be raised spiritual. There will be a transformation that will take place. We will be changed. We will be transformed to be like Jesus. Now what Paul says here, look at Christ. You see, dear ones, Paul is saying that if we look at Christ, we will realize that our hope lies beyond this broken world. And our hope lies beyond these perishable bodies. You and I, we who this week have identified ourselves as born again Christians, we who have believed and trusted in Jesus, one day, one day, we will be like Jesus. When he appears, the Bible says, we will be transformed to be like him. We'll be given a new body. And yet, just as many were able to see and recognize resurrected Jesus, as the two men who are walking with him, to Emmaus, as his disciples, as Cephas, as we read in the first day of this, in, in the first few verses of this chapter, as the twelve of his apostles, as the five hundred people were able to identify the resurrected Jesus and recognize him. So, shall people be able to recognize, recognize us? So, when we get to heaven, we'll be given new bodies. There are things that will not continue from this life. But the truth is, when we'll be heaven, you'll be able to tell this is Ken. This is Kenneth. This is Kennedy. You'll be able to identify each one. Now what Paul says here, look at the resurrected Jesus. I know that you'll be like him someday with bodies transformed by him the truth is as i had mentioned on because we bear the, the marks and the image of the first adam our bodies will get weak will get sick all of us at one time with life will keep taking medicine some of us it might even get worse we might get amputated different parts of our body maybe hearts or legs some of us you might live life on wheelchairs. But the truth is, no matter what life gives you here on earth, you need to know that one day we will be like Jesus. We'll be given new bodies. We'll be transformed by him. I like a story of one woman who wrote a, uh, several famous hymns. She is blind. And one time as she was being interrogated of how she feels about being blind and she has believed in Jesus, this is what she had to say. I can't see in this life, but I look forward that at that moment when my body will be made like Jesus, the first person when I'll be given new eyes, a new creation to see and to behold will be Jesus. Like that testimony. This life, because we, we are in a body that bears the first marks and the image of the first Adam, who get sick. Some of us might mean this life we might just get medic medication throughout. But what that means is we will be transformed to be like Jesus. We'll be given new bodies that don't need medicine. Some of us, maybe our life is marked with tears. We'll be given new bodies that will need to, not to cry because of pain. Look at Christ. Paul says, we all be like him with bodies transformed by 
him. Now, as we bring this to a conclusion, it's good to add again by asking ourselves the question we have been asking ourselves all through. So what? It's good we have looked at these verses, but the big question is, so what? Two things that are very important for us as we come to almost the end of this chapter. Two things. Very important. The first thing is there in verses 50 all the way to verse 53. We will all be changed. We will be changed because our future requires it. Yes, you and I, we who have believed in Jesus, we will be changed and will be given a new body. Paul tells us that in heaven, or if you're like in the new creation, our perishable, weak, dishonorable bodies will not be needed. Heaven is so glorious. Heaven is so good to be able to get bodies that sweat and smell. To get bodies that get sick. Paul says, we will be changed and we will be given a new body. Look with me what he says there in verse 50 to verse 53. And please note as I read how many times he uses the word changed. Verse 50. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall all be changed. Have you not heard what Paul says? That we will be changed. It will happen quickly. In a moment, in a snap of a finger. In a fraction of a millisecond, we will all be changed. If Jesus, if God can be able to create the whole world and be able to give all these different kinds of things that we are saying, He gave them near a new body, how will He not? In a moment, in a trickling of an eye, you see how you close your eyes and you even don't hear eyes, you have closed them. We will all be changed. And it will be changed because heaven requires it. The perishable will be changed imperishable. This body that dies and decays will be changed, will be given a new body that never dies, as we saw this morning in our Bible studies. Jesus got a new body, a heavenly body. This is what they're looking forward to, isn't it? This is what encouraging us when life gets very tough. When some of us will have to do in this life without some body parts. Or we'll struggle in body parts like my eyes. You see, even if what will happen in this life, we never know what the future holds. But if life gives us or puts us on a wheelchair, that's a reason for us to learn and to look forward to a time when we'll be given legs that can be able to walk. And bodies that don't get sick or paralyzed. So if you are a Christian, please hope just build this life. We will be changed because heaven requires new bodies. Number two and the last thing. Verse 54 to 57. Death will be destroyed. And death will be destroyed because Christ himself secured the victory against death. Verse 54 to 57 are my favorite verses in this chapter. <clears throat> they encourage me, these few verses, especially in the midst of death, death of a loved one, and sometimes even when I think of my own death. Here are verses you and I ought to memorize again and again and think over again and again even as we think of our own death. This is the climax of what Paul is saying in this chapter. You see what Paul says here in this chapter is, death, that monster that has claimed the lives of so many people, including the lives of our loved ones, will be given one blow. It will be dealt with by Jesus, our superhero. 
it will be completely dealt with. Which means then, we Christians, we can and we will be able to look on the face of death and laugh. Look with me what the Bible says there in verse 54. Look at with me. This is very exciting verses. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal, that's which that which dies, puts on that which doesn't die, the mortal, the mortal puts on the immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? In other words, it's kind of asking, death, where is your power? Death. Aya, sasa cheza tuone. Cheza kiwewe tuone. And you know what will happen? Death. Its victory has already been robbed. Its sting has been taken away. Death will be destroyed. And one day, we will look death on the eye and laugh. <laughs> You and I, Paul says, will be raised, given a new body that will never die again. We will not fear death. I know some of us here fear death. I do fear death at times. But Paul says, in new creation, one will be given new bodies. There will be nothing to fear. But please note, who takes the sting of death? Please note with me who swallows up. Death in victory, verse 57. Paul knows who. So what he does is, he shouts in jubilation. Because he's on the winning side. He says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory over death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus rose from the dead. Did we see that today in the Bible study? And because he rose from the dead, it means we too will rise from the dead. He conquered death. He defeated death. Which means then we will also be able to defeat and to conquer death. He was able to be risen from the dead. He destroyed death's power and victory. Which means you and I, if we believe in Jesus, we'll be able to do that as well. Now that Paul bursts into praise there and says, Thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, may the Lord help us this morning, this week, this month, this year, and years to come. To remember these truths we have been seen from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. May the Lord help us that at that moment when you'll be very sick, or your parents will be very sick, or your grandparents, or your brothers or sisters, that you and I will long and will look forward to a day when we will be changed and when death itself will be destroyed. But until then, brothers and sisters, comes verse 58. Paul finishes by saying, therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. As we will see tomorrow in our devotion, just for a few minutes before we go to church, what Paul is saying here is, stick with Christ now, because you know how the future looks like. Serve him now, because you know how the future looks like. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. This is what I want us to do as we finish. Please turn to your neighbor in twos. Be your neighbor in twos. I want you to share with your neighbor one thing that you have really encouraged you from First Corinthians chapter 15 so far. And then I would want to give you three minutes to pray for each other. So your neighbor will pray for you, and then you'll pray for your neighbor. Three minutes. So the first minute is just to share with your neighbor one thing that have encouraged you a lot from these passages or this chapter, and then you will in turn pray for one another.